Good morning. Happy Monday. Are you awake yet? You ready to start your week off? Me too. Today we're going to be talking about Philippians chapter 4. I'm reading out of the New Living Translation. I'm trying to guzzle down a little coffee so I can not, not uh, slur my words. I'm still a little groggy. Long weekend this weekend, but a good weekend. I hope you did too. I hope you had a great weekend. I wanted to remind you about a couple of things. Um, one, we are starting a brand new book tomorrow, Colossians. So for those of you who are new, I just want to say welcome. We are so happy that you're here. You are most welcome to join us and join in the discussion. Hi, Cindy. Hi, Z. Um, that's what this is all about. This is about not just hearing the word, but then digesting it for yourself and saying, what is God really saying to me in this hour? So I just want to welcome you and encourage you join in on the discussion. If you're not listening live and you're, maybe you're listening during your lunch break, I know a lot of you've told me you listen during work. Um, hi, Carlos. That's awesome. Um, so happy that you're, you're here and doing it. And even if you're doing this late in the day, even at night after you get home from work, don't feel shy about participating in the discussion because that, that's what really excites me, is just to hear what God's doing in your life. Hi, Don. So, so glad to see you guys this morning. And then the final thing I want to bring up is this live Q&A we have for Thursday night. Um, a couple of you have mentioned that you really wish you could you know, be doing this or connecting with me live. And so I had thought, well, maybe we could try doing just a live Q&A session. So I don't really have anything planned um, as far as um, teachings go. So I was just hoping, you know, I could just be present with you guys. I know a few of you have asked me different questions about what's it like um, as a woman in ministry. And you have questions about that. And I'm happy to answer those. So anything is game. Um, if you're not going to be able to join that live, but you want to send a question in, please do so. You can post it right on that event page for the live Q&A for Thursday night. Just post your question. I'll try and get to it throughout throughout our time together. It's not going to be long. I just want to make sure that I can connect with people who maybe can't do it in the morning. Hi, Jana. Hi, Christina. Hi, Debbie. Nice to see you guys. Well, welcome Let's do this. Philippians chapter 4. This will be the final chapter in Philippians 4. So let's go. Reading out a New Living Translation. Like I said, any translation is fine. Hi, Nate. Hi, Juanita. Um, that's the one I'm using. So here we go. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stay true to the Lord. I love you and I long to see you, dear friends, for you are my joy and the crown I receive for my work. I want to stop just here. It's the very beginning. But this is just a good reminder that Paul isn't writing this thinking he's laying down a theology book. He is writing this as a letter to a specific group of people in Philippi. The Philippians, he's writing to them. He's writing to this specific church. And I love that for a couple reasons. It helps us remember that Paul wasn't writing in a vacuum, right? He's, he's, he's not uh, writing his theology book. He's writing a letter to real people who he loved dearly. He had invested his life in. And one of the things I love about this is he says, you're my joy and the crown I receive for my work. He saw them as such a blessing. This is one of those um, regions and churches that he just, he loved. He didn't write to correct. He's just encouraging them. They were encouraging to him. And so even I want to show you this, this what a true father, a true mother in the faith see spiritual tr children growing up in the things of God, and this is their joy. It's not the accolades. It's not more platforms they're looking for. They want to see, they want to see the church grow up into their calling into the things of God. Amen. Hi, Deborah. Hi, Lilix. Hi, Sean. Hi, Trisha. Good morning. Okay, let's keep moving. Words of encouragement. Now I appeal to Yudia and Syntyche, please, because you belong to the Lord, settle your disagreement. And I ask you, my true partner, to help these two women, for they worked hard with me in telling others the good news. They worked along with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are written in the book of life. Always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. Let everyone see that you are considerate in all that you do. Remember, the Lord is coming soon. There's a lot we could pull out in this text. 
I know this isn't the main part of the text, it's not the point of this text, but I would say I just draw your attention to these two women who are having a disagreement. These are people Paul considers fellow gospel preachers. So for those of you who've, who've heard the words of Paul used against women in ministry, I would just point you to this verse. We're going to see that I think there's many inconsistencies that he wasn't making a claim against women in all regions. He was speaking to a specific church, the church of Corinth, dealing with that. And you can even see that here. There were two women who were, who were laboring alongside him, co-workers, who were, who were speaking and preaching the gospel. For those of you who've really questioned that, that's going to be extremely good news to you. It's not the main point of the verse, but I just thought I'd highlight it because we are talking about New Testament letters um, that were written by Paul. Hi, Roxy. Let's move on. Verse 6. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Don't you love this? Don't worry about anything. Pray about everything. I love the way that's phrased. It gives us really a clear order to follow, right? We all get pressed to the point of fretfulness, right? We, we've got an idea of how we think things should go. And of course, life never quite works out that way. And we can, we can feel worried and anxious and fretful. And Paul is saying, when that starts to rise up and you stop, stop yourself, stop fretting, stop worrying. And right there at that moment, begin to pray, begin to have a conversation with the Lord. Remember what we re remember, what we learned in Ephesians, all things, all spiritual things have been given to us. Yes. In the person of Christ, in the heavenly realm, we have been given everything that we need. Amen. Stop. Remember this. Begin to call out to the Lord in that need. And say, Father, I know you see me. Begin to bring out those needs and talk to the Lord about it. But don't stop there. When you're done expressing that, what's the second thing Paul says to do? Begin to thank God for what he's already done. Do you know sometimes we need to create our own atmosphere of faith? around us. Forget preaching faith somewhere else for a minute, just in us. When we remember to thank God, we have to remember his faithfulness in history's past. Yes, to us, you can, if, you, if you're brand new to the Lord and you're like, I don't have that much. Remember how God saved you? Remember how when you did, when you were his enemy, he loved you and he came knocking on the doors of your heart. Remember and let yourself begin to play those things over and over your mind until thankfulness arises in your heart. Amen. Remember what God has done in times past. Paul's saying, create in your own heart an atmosphere of faith. Why? Because God responds to faith. He responds to faith. Amen. Without faith, it's imp impossible to please the Lord. So we steward the soil of our hearts, yes? So we pray about everything, and then we begin to thank God for already what he's done. And then the third thing Paul says is we will experience peace. Man, I'm telling you, these scriptures are going to be like a prime sign and a wonder for the days and hours ahead. Um, when the world looks at us, I think one of the main distinguishing factors for the time that we live in, you know, may, I, maybe this has always been true, but I feel it even more in the last couple of years. I, I want to know what you think about this, but I feel like one of the main signs and wonders is going to be our peace. It's going to be our peace in the midst of storm, in the midst of unknown, as the, in the midst of, you know, darkness. It's going to be our peace. These are three steps. Pray about what you need. Thank God. For what he's already done. Recount his history in your life and then experience peace. Experience it. Allow it to wash over you. And from that place, from your communion with God, that is our witness. Amen. It's not so much the track that we hand to the belief, to the unbeliever, although I'm, I'm for those things. But when we become people of peace, when we become people of peace, right? We become, we become a walking billboard, so to speak, an epistle written on our hearts. Amen?
Amen. Trish, what are you saying? Praying is the easiest thing to do, but it's the one thing we forget. Yeah. I know I'm guilty of this myself. Yeah, that's why we need these reminders. Amen. We just do. All of us do. Let's go on to verse 8. Okay. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all you learned and received from me. Everything you heard from me and saw me doing, then the God of peace will be with you. I love these verses, the if you do this, then this. If you do this, then this. There's so many of these in the scriptures. If you do this, then this. As we fix our, our mind, our thoughts on the list, even if some of you think in terms of lists, that's not me, but I think there's one here to be found by you. Yes. As we fix our eyes on the admirable things, the pure things that takes some restraint. Yes. In our day when you've got news bashing you, I don't even want to turn the news on most days, but just it's easy to fix on all the things that are unfolding and the scary in it, but to fix your eyes on the, on the admirable, the lovely, the pure. Amen. This does something in our heart. Amen. Carol, what are you saying? I'm reminded of the Moravians on the ship in the storm with John Wesley. Their peace led him to be born again. That's right. Actually, John was on his way to come do missions. I think it was in from England to America. And there was a massive storm that hits the ship. And John's afraid for his life, as probably we all would be. And he's he's coming over with some other missionaries, Moravian missionaries, and they are singing and enjoying God. No fear. They're in the same storm, friends. They're in the exact same storm. This is for you. And, and so there they are singing and worshiping the Lord. And it was in those moments John realized, I do not have what they, these people have. I do not know Jesus the way these people know Jesus. I know about him, but I have not entrusted my heart in that way. I mean, thank you, Carol. That is so right on. And it so, it so goes with what we're talking about in that it's not about Christians not going through storms. We go through storms. It's in the midst of the storms. We don't lose sight of who we love and who we worship and who we know. Amen. Jana saying, I have family members fretting because they see the times are drawing near, but because they have no context of end times, they're seeking a plan of escape constantly buying water and non-perishables and I've got to hit the see more button. Um, seeking new places to live, not bashing them, but my peace has been an example and convicting. Amen. Hi mom. Glad you're here. Um, yeah, I, I get it. I think there's some wisdom if, if we believe we're in that hour to begin to, to, um, gather some of those, those things to get us, you know, just having things on hand for not, for, um, for literal, literal storms in Florida, we have hurricanes and all that stuff. I think there's definitely reason to do that. But at the same time, um, it's not going to be our provisions alone that sustain. It's our provisions with Christ. Amen. How many of us know you could have storehouses full, but as we're all, as we all know, you know, we're not called to hoard. We would be called to serve our brothers and sisters who are in the same place. Amen. And so, yeah, our, our hope can't even be in our in our water and, and non-perishables. It's got to be in Christ. Amen. I want to just um, speak into this list that Paul gives us and ask you these questions. Put it into a question form. Same list, but I think sometimes when we hear it as a question, it, it's like, oh, I need to answer this for myself. Amen. I believe that's how we're supposed to read the Bible. It's supposed to be, am I doing this or what is this or how does this apply to me? It becomes a dialogue with the scriptures. Amen. Amen. The, the script, the Bible is called the word of God. It becomes a dialogue back and forth with the word of God. So let me ask you this. Where do you spend your thoughts? Have you ever thought of that? That your thoughts are what you're investing in? Where do you spend your thoughts? What is true that you can focus on? Hi, Karen. What is honorable? What is right? What is pure? What is pure that you can focus on? What is lovely? What is lovely? What do you consider lovely? Can you think about that? What is admirable? 
think about these things. Think about these things. But I want you to ask yourself, what are these things in my life? How could I focus on these things throughout my day? God, how do I do this? Amen. Think about these things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Practice loving God and obeying him. Train yourself in godliness. Amen. Discipleship which is what Jesus has called us into, not just to become converts, but to become disciples, is to follow him, to be trained up like him. Learn to give, learn to pray, learn to love, learn to be inconvenienced, learn how to follow Jesus in everyday life. Amen? Let's keep going. Verse 10, if you're reading along, and I'd love for you to be reading along in your own Bible, how I, how I praise the Lord that you're concerned about me again. I know you've always been concerned for me, but you didn't have the chance to help me. Not that I was ever in need, for I've learned how to be content with, with whatever I have. I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I've learned the secret of living in every situation, whether it's with a full stomach or empty, with plenty or little. For I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. Even so, you've done well to share with me in my present difficulty. Oh, man, what a, what a passage. Before I give my commentary, let me read what you're saying. Don says, it's amazing to me when we allow ourselves to get worked up about something and allow it to affect us for days and we pray and ask God for how to handle this and give me peace. In a moment, it all, ooh, I'm going to hit Seymour. In a moment, it all changes. I've really worked on this in my life, and I'm still working on this. Yeah, we need constant training and equipping. Amen? Have you ever noticed, like, if you practice these skills of fixing your... It's a skill. Have you ever thought of it like that? It's something you train yourself to do, to fix your eyes on Jesus and not, not the storm around you. It is something to be practiced. And we do get better and better and better as we practice as we practice fixing our eyes on, on Jesus, I did sports my whole life. So I, I think of God as being um, and in Jesus coming as the good coach. He's equipping. He's the good shepherd. He's also training us for, for the destiny that he is embedded deep within us. And he's calling us to look at him through the midst of the storm, right? That's what all good coaches do. All good coaches train up. Um, we don't come to them with excellent form or excellent endurance or whatever the sport was. We learn these things through training and equipping. Don't lose heart because you flipped out at the last storm. You know, just focus on the Lord. Say, God, help me next time. Help, help me next time. Help me today. I feel like I'm in a daily storm sometimes. Help me today in the midst of what comes to fix my eyes on you, to be thankful for what you've done, God, to experience your peace and to be peace. Amen. Practice these things. What you'll notice over time is that as you practice godliness, which is the disciples talked all about this, the apostles talked about, as we practice godliness, what we notice is that as we grow up in the things of God, we're not pushed back the same way we used to be. Right? A storm arises and you go, I've walked on water before. You know, I'm coming out to Jesus before. Or I'm going to sing in the midst of this storm before. Because I know the one who knows how to calm the storms of my life. Amen? Uh, Chris Dreesen says, yes, we were just talking last night with someone about peace in the midst of situations that we're in. Amen. Jan, I always make mention of our thought life. It's God's clue into helping us manifest the life that he has planned for us inwardly. He knows that as we think, so we are. Debbie says, amen. Deborah says, learning, practicing a skill to be content. We do get better. Perfect practice makes, perfect practice makes practice, not just unmindful actions. Yes, over and over again. Amen. That's so true. So true. So I love this message here. And I, I look at those, that verse again. Verse 12. I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I've learned the secret of living in every situation, whether it's with a full stomach or empty, with plenty or little, for I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. What I mean, what a phenomenal set of scriptures right there. Amen. Paul's message isn't about stuff. 
It's not about, hey, guys, come to Christ. Your bank account's going to be full for days. These weren't, this isn't the message of the gospel. The message is in the mountains, in the valleys, in the ups and downs of life, in the unknown, Jesus is perfectly able to save us. He's perfectly able to bring us into a place of not just peace, but contentment. He is able to, he's able to sustain us, provide for us out of who he is towards us so that we're no longer dependent on circumstances and things and stuff and what this person says about me and what that person says about me. I know who you are, Jesus. And because I know who you are, I know who I am. There's no way. I just want to say this idea of the self-help gospel. There's no self-help gospel. There's nothing good in me. Probably nothing good in you, but I'll leave that for you to, dis to say. There's nothing good in me. There's nothing good in me. It's in Christ. There's no stable thing in me. No, no, no. I am not the source. He is the source. I know how, I know the secret, Paul says, of, of in every situation, learning how to be content, learning how to be in peace. And it's Jesus. Hallelujah. That makes me excited. It just does. Okay. Verse 15. I really think there's a whole lot more, by the way, to be pulled out of that paragraph. So think about it. Some of you think about it, and I want to hear your thoughts on that. How, what's, what's, what does that mean to you? I bet there's so many testimonies just on those who are watching live right now. I bet there's so many testimonies of, of, of you experience this verse, these verses, you know, learning how to be content in the highs and the lows. I would love to hear from you. I would love to hear, hear you share that. Sean saying, it's like he's saying steadiness is the greater thing. I think it is the greater thing. Amen. I'm, I think we've been talking about that. Steadiness is a sign and a wonder. Amen. It is a sign and a wonder. And we forget that, right? We can go chasing all of these, these manifestations of God and God is going, you don't need to do that. You, the kingdom of God is within you. It's in you. Learn how, learn how to walk in the regions of your own heart, amen? Learn how to, you know, I'm, I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep going. Verse 15, as you know, you Philippians were the only ones who gave me financial help when I first brought you the good news and then traveled on to Macedonia. No other church did this. Even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent help more than once. I don't say this because I want a gift from you. Rather, I want you to receive a reward for your kindness. I love can I just tell you, I love that in all the letters, in all the letters that we've read so far, I mean, Paul's been imprisoned. There wasn't some wonderful prison system of food, right? Um, it just, it wasn't like that. It doesn't work like that. And, and I'm sure he was in lack, obviously, more than he was in everything. Um, and I, I just love that you never get that sense, right? It's almost like we're surprised that at the end of these five chapters or whatever it is from Galatians, Ephesians, whatever it is after he's, you're like, wow, he's writing this in prison. And he's talking about, you know, being, being in, in the heavens with Jesus, about being seated with Christ on the throne. We're almost surprised by the circumstance. Like, wow. I mean, he's writing this in a hard place. And again, I look at this letter and I think, I'm sure he did need um, some sustenance, right? And he, he doesn't ask for it. He's Why? I think he's trusting the Lord as, as he's challenging the church to do it. He is also challenging the church to do it because it's his life. He's, he's talking to the Lord about his need. Amen? I love this. And he's trusting the Lord in that. I, I think that um, when so many people, especially they... You know, people who've had a bad experience with church and will talk about, you know, all they want is money. And I just think, I hate that that's, I, I, I so hate as someone who's in ministry that that's how ministers are perceived. You know, because I don't think that's the faith that's been handed down to us. How is it that we're calling people to live lives of faith and yet in the pulpit many times that's not demonstrated? Do you know what I'm saying? Right? I mean, how come preachers are telling the, the crowd to live in faith, but then they'll spend 20 minutes collecting an offering 
and 15 preaching the gospel. I mean, there's something wrong with that. And I think we can say that because we see that in these verses. If anyone had a right to collect an offering, it may have been Paul. And he uses it to build, he uses his time to build up that church so that their faith would be stronger. Amen? What's Janice saying? As I was driving to work listening to this, I was convicted about how I've lacked steadiness lately. I've been complaining like nobody's business. So grateful that this chapter fell in the midst of my mess. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. Me too. Me too. Yeah, I just want to point you to this. This is the faith that's been handed down to us. So those of you called into ministry, this is a, even a good reminder to me. Um, always want to be reminded. Always want to be sensitive to, you know, how 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 to... How to entrust our hearts in every way. Amen. Even in the financial things, I think it's, um, personally, I think it's wrong to spend double the time asking for money in ministry and not getting to the meat of the gospel. That's my personal thoughts. Um, okay, here we go. Verse 18. At the moment, I have all I need and more. I mean, look at that. You've got to remember. <laughs> he just doesn't complain. I love it. At the moment, I have all I need and more. I'm generously supplied with the gifts you sent me with Epaphroditus. They are a sweet-smelling sacrifice that is acceptable and pleasing to God. I love that. Paul regarded what was sown into his life as a gift and as a response to God. Mom says, yes, you never feel he's desperate or destitute, right? Even in lack of enough or desire of earthly comforts only in his need and desire more of not hot, I'm sure you meant God, or himself or others. If he can, we can too with God. Amen. Yes, I get what you're saying. Um, there are sweet smelling sacrifices, it's acceptable and pleasing to God. And this same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs from his glorious riches, which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. Paul didn't consider himself a poor man or prisoner. He didn't. He considered himself an ambassador of Jesus. Amen. Now all glory to God our Father forever and ever. Amen. Verse 21. Give my greetings to each of God's holy people, all who belong to Christ Jesus. The brothers who are with me send you their greetings, and all the rest of God's people send you greetings to especially those in Caesar's household. May the grace of the Lord Jesus be with your spirit. Amen. What a great book. Philippians is an awesome book. I hope you're encouraged. And I just want to kind of charge you again today. Go through this list. I'm going to include it in my notes. Maybe you can already see them there. But I just wrote that list down from verse eight, uh, verses 8, eight and 9 about practicing, practicing this, this um, practicing where we place our thoughts, where we invest our thoughts. Isn't that a good way of thinking about it? Where do we invest our thoughts each day? Amen. So what is true? What can, you, what can you begin to dwell on and meditate on that's true? What's honorable? What's right? Amen. I want to remind you tomorrow we're going to start the book of Colossians. This is a great time to invite friends to start brand new. Amen. Just a brand new book with you. We're starting with Colossians 1 uh, tomorrow. And also, just again, reminding you about the live Q&A on Thursday night. I'm excited about it, um, but because I don't have uh, much of a plan, I just want to ask you, think about maybe questions you want to ask. Um, if you aren't going to be able to join us live on Thursday night, um, please go ahead on that, um, what's it called, the event that's that's on for the live Q&A. If you want to just put questions there, I'm happy to to address those questions as we go. I sure love you guys. I'm going to pray for you. Father, thank you. Thank you again for just this chance to read over these letters that were written to the early church and, and just the awe that we have been grafted in. Um, we have been grafted in to your body. It's humbling to read, um, to read a letter, this, this correspondence. I can't imagine Paul ever thought, God, that this would his letter would be included in the canonized scripture, but here we read it. And God, would just thank you for the example we see in in His life, and and the way He followed you, and the way He trusted you, and the way He trained His 
mind on godliness, to focus on you and to give himself to you and to vet, invest his every thought into you and into your kingdom. Father, uh, do the same work in us, just right where you are. The Holy Spirit, just invite the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, do the same work in me. Teach me, God. Teach me how to not fret anymore. We don't want our our example or our life to be um, to be one of fretfulness and worry. Father, help us. Help us, God. Help us to do what Paul said, Jesus. The example he gives us to stop fretting, to, to, to not worry, but in those moments to begin to lift our prayer to you, to begin to dialogue with you and trusting every need to you, looking to you as our sustainer and our provider and our healer and our deliverer and our savior, that we would... We would call on you, the Father who loves us, and Jesus in that place, that you would help us, would, that you would remind us as we begin to express our need to you, that you'd remind us of your faithfulness towards us, and that God, out of that reminding, <clears throat> the overflow of our heart would be thankfulness for all of the things that we've, we've seen you do. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Even now, we're thankful for all that we've already seen you do. We're thankful for getting to do life together right here, right now. We're, thank you, we're, we're thankful for that. And God, in that, in that place of gratitude, release peace over everyone listening. Release your peace, God. Release your steadiness. Release your contentedness over us. Jesus, our steadiness, we say, let it be a sign and a wonder in this hour. Cause our peace, God, to, to be... Uh, to be used as a means of bringing those you love to you. God, in Jesus' name. Sure love you guys. Sure love you. Love you, Mom. Love you guys, Debbie. Sean, welcome. Love you, Kathy. Bray, love you guys. Love you so much. Just appreciate doing life with you. And I will see you tomorrow, Colossians chapter 1. Love you. Can't wait to hear what you get from this verse. See you later.